just introduced myself. My name is Juniper. I have a cold today, by the way. It's not my usual voice. Um, and I'm the development director at Girls Action, so I do fundraising and program evaluation. And um, great. So I have just um, a little bit of a presentation. And obviously, each of you has your, um, your expertise. And so we want to um, share that, because I'm just one-sixth of the expertise in this, on this call right now. And so what I wanted to share is some of the things that I've learned about fundraising, especially being a person who didn't want to do it and didn't like it. And I think that a lot of it is around, um, well, we, we do a lot of work with girls and a lot of, like, a lot of um, our programs are designed to kind of increase self-esteem and, and confidence. And I think that's part of our work in fundraising as well is to, is to feel like we are worth it, that our projects are worthy and that we have to like really live and breathe that. And, um, because in fundraising we're doing a lot of asking. So we're asking, 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 asking. And for many of us, it's difficult to ask, um, unless we know the answer is going to be yes. Right. So I, I think, um, I think that's that it really helps and it's really important obviously to keep the the momentum up and the inspiration and the um, the good sentiment so talking about it with your t like with your team can really help because the worst thing is to feel isolated like you're struggling you know to get funds for something that you really care about but oof it's like you against the world kind of thing so whenever I feel that me against the world feeling I make sure that I talk with other people on the team about what's happening and that always helps to lift and brings in, helps to generate new ideas. Um, so hopefully you all have that, right? Access to, to colleagues, to team members, to like fellow collective members and, and stuff who can, who can keep the energy up. And then recently, um, my colleague Sarah Butler, she wrote um, a blog. So on our website, you can go to the, the main page of our website, girlsactionfoundation.ca, and Sarah just wrote a really great um, blog about fundraising. And one of the things that she talked about, so I encourage you all to go and read it because it's, or whenever you need a boost, that's what I find it's good for. Um, and so one thing she, she was talking about is the taboo on money, which I think is really very, very interesting that, um, that, it's, that it's easy sort of to fight for causes, but then as soon as it's like, wait a second, we need money and we need to put our money, you know, other people have to put their money where their mouth is and support us, right? So then it can, it just, it, it raises a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of issues. Like we can, we could talk about, you know, how bad things are getting in our communities. We can talk about really harsh realities. Um, but often when we, it comes to money, there is a taboo. So I think it's interesting to think about that too. So one thing I have learned um, here, and especially from working with, um, with our director, Tatiana Fraser, who, who, who started this organization as a very small grassroots organization in Ottawa, offering girls programs, and now we're a national organization, and we have a lot more money and a lot more recognition. So, um, and what she has taught me is the main thing with all of that um, development is that it's about our relationships with other people. And that sounds really simple, but um, but that really is what it is. And so. I'll say, like, me, I was someone who, would, like, loved school, liked getting the answers right, liked to apply for scholarships and things because there was a form that I could fill in and I could make it as good as I could, and that's, that was probably really good, and then I would get accepted or I would get the money or whatever. So I like to be able to fit things within a box and then, and then give it to the powers that be and then have a positive answer coming back to them. Now, sometimes fundraising is like that, but often it isn't. And what Tatiana taught me is before you even ever fill out that form for application, do your best to develop some kind of relationship um, with the funder. 
And so that's our number one. And I think that really is the secret of our, like, of our success. Um, and so that's why I was really happy to hear Alicia's um, story recently about saying, okay, well, I bank at RBC. I could go to them. I feel comfortable there. Um, and then I, and then she called them, and she had a presentation to make on. She had a paper presentation, but still she called. She talked to someone when she went to give um, her her documents to them. She also made a face-to-face -face contact, and so that is that's what's going to carry this, right? Because I mean, we can just think of we can put ourselves in the in the place of the other person. Um, who were soliciting for donations or for in-kind or for funding. And they're people too, right? <laughs> and sometimes I forget that and I think, oh, they're just the institution which has its objectives which are already on the website and I can read them and I, so I should know and, and you know, it's, it's cut and paste, but it's not. It's like, it's very, very much about, um, about the relationship that you have with them and um, and then that will help in a lot of ways, even with government. See, this is where this is where this really had an impact on me, realizing that it's a lot based on relationships. Is working with government, which you would assume would be the the most objective, the most kind of cold kind of funders, but they're not because civil servants are people too, and, <laughs> and they they. Uh, they, they have interests, and they can they can have their interest sparked by you and what you do, um, and then that will that will help to carry your proposal or whatever through their system because um, often often with government proposals, especially you get to you get to roadblocks. And you need to have someone there who's going to be your champion or who's going to speak up and say, this is a really important project. Let's put it near the top of the list. Um, and that is so much reinforced if you have a relationship with them. So I really, in my mind, before I make a call, um, say it's a cold call to a foundation and I've never talked with them before, um, I, I kind of... Imagine in my mind that this other person is my colleague, that they are there to do similar work. And I assume, but I have to work hard like to kind of visualize that first, I assume that they're going to care in whatever way. Like they might, they might not express it the same way I do, but they're going to care about whatever I, I'm talking about. And so I found that trying to like really make a concerted effort to say, okay, you, they are my equal, um, before I make that call, really helps me to not feel like I'm asking, that I'm like begging, you know, with my hands out, please, 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 can we meet with you, or please, 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 because it's it's a privilege for them as well to be able to um, to talk with people who are doing such such essential grassroots work that has such heart and. Um, yeah, so I found that really important. And the importance also of keeping the relationship yeah. up and following up with them and giving them like things that they can see and and stories of what's happening on the ground, the impact of their of their donation. And even um even this like the smallest um initiative could create, for example, like a little um like a one or two page newsletter that at least has some images because pictures speak a thousand words images that you can um, and and articles about what you're doing and maybe even like testimonials from um, from youth or from women who are involved in the in the project yeah. um, that that could be a very simple and easy tool. We just started finally an e newsletter and I'm like so happy because that is like a major communication tool that we can use with um, with funders as well as everybody else um, that reminds them, okay, Girls Action exists, or okay, this um, um, you know, like Metrac with your with your um, your youth programs. Okay, this program exists and they're still active. And oh, look at 
all those dynamic youth, you know? And uh, there's some very simple, I don't know what they are, but I could get the information. I think there's some very simple templates now to do e-newsletters, um, which are lighter, you know, lighter in terms of you don't have to get them printed and mailed out and everything. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on. And another um, tip that um, was given to me by a fundraising consultant when I was first getting started here is when you are speaking with a funder, especially in the beginning, early on in the relationship, that um, we have one mouth for speaking and two ears for listening, and that's for a reason. So he said, what you're doing in those, in those meetings or those calls with your funders is really trying to get information, not just sell your project. Um, and the reason is, and this has been my experience, that what information is, is made public, say on their website, um, is not the whole story. And therefore, um, you need to know what the priorities of that funder are. You need to know what kinds of projects really get them interested and excited, um, or what would be a good fit. And the only way that you can do that um, is by talking with them. And so my model for when I make you know, early calls or um, have early meetings is to keep it very, very open in terms of how I describe our project. Say, for example, we're interested in doing a rural um, girls project soon. So instead of saying, we want to do... Um, workshops in these 10 communities about these specific issues, I would say we work with a number of communities who work with rural girls, and they are surfacing these kinds of questions and issues. And here are several different ways that we think that we could support these organizations. So I'm keeping it very general, and then seeing what, it's like fishing. So, so putting out some bait, and then seeing which of the bait um, they bite. And so I think that that can be helpful too. Um, and especially, like I was thinking about your example, um, Kelly, like Metrac has ongoing programs that it wants to keep funding, but that's a real challenge to mm -hmm. say, we have this successful program, um, do you want to fund it for another two years? Um, but that could be a big challenge. Um, um, so. I wanted to share just some practical things about, um, like Alicia had already mentioned, um, prepare, preparing some print materials. So often what we do is um, either write a letter or prepare sort of like a, a two-pager that um, describes the project that we're trying to get funded. Um, in, again, in general enough language that it won't close the door on us uh, right away. For example, with the eating disorders, like if you, if you think that might not catch on right away, then you could talk more generally about health um, or body image or things like that that, um, that might have a more popular um, appeal. And so usually I include like just a very short description of the project, um, the, the objectives, kind of the issues that the youth are facing and so why this project is necessary, but very, very short. Um, and then some of the potential like impacts um, that it could have um, on participants. And, and that can be a, discuss, a, a discussion piece. So often I'll call um, a funder up and say, we are developing a project and we would like to talk with you as we are developing it, because it's not finalized yet, um, can we have a meeting? And so that's a way, instead of saying, we have a project that is set in stone, mm -hmm. um, that's a more open way, um, so that they will at least start to engage with us, instead of saying, oh, well, our deadline is March 1st, just send it in, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. And another thing... Um, Girls Action has some resources that might be handy for you um, in fundraising. We've developed um, some thick, thick research reviews. So what these are, are um, combing through all the research on girls and young women and um, 
finding really great quotes, and they're all organized by theme. So these are things, also, they also include statistics. Um, so the research reviews, there's one that's very general. There's one that is more specifically on racialized girls and young women. And there's another one that is uh, northern specific, but I don't know if we've published it yet. But it's coming, northern and, and rural. Um, so I really encourage you to go check those out. Yeah, so the research reviews are great because what it means is that you can skim through them and find um, quotes to support your approach, quotes to support, um, to demonstrate the issues um, that girls and young women are facing and then therefore that's why this project is needed. So it's like backup, backup research. Um, and the Amplify manual is online and there's a, a, a small but pretty good section on fundraising that has some tips um, about proposal writing on like it gives some examples say like Isabel maybe you've never written a funding proposal before I find it so useful to look at templates or look at what other people have already done and so um, in the Amplify manual the fundraising section there's a bunch of examples of, of objectives, a bunch of examples of outcomes, and so you can look at that and it's very easy to translate, to take that kind of format and then translate it to your project. So at least you don't start from, from scratch. Um, and then there's some other kind of proposal tips. And I think there's even like a sample, there's a sample budget, there's a sample um, work plan, a sample evaluation plan all of which are often required for funding proposals to, um, yeah. So that can, that can help kickstart if you don't have those already in your organization. And another um, tip that I have been using more and more lately is to um, go to people who have already funded us go, or go to current funders and get them to help us find additional support. So asking them for ideas of other foundations or other contacts. Um, so that's another way that they can help you. They've already sh shown that they support you by giving, by donating money. Um, so you can give them another chance and often they're pretty well connected. Um, even within the government, we've often gone say to status of women, not lately because it's a different situation, but to say like where else in the federal government could we get support for this project. Mm. So that's, that's helpful too. And I'd say um, it's best, like it's, um, this is what I'm doing right now, we're in prospecting phase, which means trying to find a lot of, a high number of new potential funders. Um, and so sometimes I feel like I'm in like just proposal writing and it's very like deep and it takes a long time but then um, at other times when that lets up is when you can cast your net wide and try and um, generate a whole bunch of new ideas and I really really recommend that you do that and like maybe do it with your board or your advisory committee or your mentors or whoever is supporting to to do like a lot of brainstorming and and generating ideas and especially going on who people know like who so that you can you already have um, perhaps a contact at um, at a company and that you could then go there so generate a big list and then prioritize and and try to get a few moving. So instead of just focusing on one, I really like in fundraising, you cannot put your, all your eggs in one basket. That's what I have written down in my notes. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> um, as hard as that is, because we have limited time, right? So I, I totally get where that comes from. But, but even like block time, say, okay, for, the, for this half day, I am just going to be calling or writing letters to new potential funders and and just get a whole bunch moving at once and then you can keep following up on those over the next little while because otherwise what happens is is it's it's hard I find to prioritize um, the the new you know generating the new possibilities 
Um, I just wanted to mention there were just a few funders on my mind that it, that um, friends have you know in our network, Girls Action Network, have recently received funds from. Um, depending on which town you're in, there, there's a, the Telus Community Investment Board. There's several across Canada, and they are really interested in supporting youth projects. Often, they're interested in sort of technology-related projects with which you can work in, say, um, skill building with young people around how to use um, like new media, web, video, digital, you know, digital arts. Um, so they, they're a possibility. The Canadian Women's Foundation offers violence prevention programs. Unfortunately, it's only once a year and their deadline is passed. It's usually like January each year. And yeah, so they're, they're good because their priority is grassroots groups um, and they support like girl specific or, or young women specific programs. Doesn't have to be, but they do. So they're cool. Um, and I wanted to know, we have, oh, and then there's usually a, a community foundation um, in the major towns and cities across Canada. They, there's like local community foundations. Um, and we have access to the Imagine Canada database of funders, um, which is a good way to find out what's, what's out there in terms of foundations especially. Um, and so we, we can um, access like who is funding in specific towns or regions. Um, that can be really helpful to get like local local money. Um, I don't know. Do, do you have access in your organizations to databases like that? No. They're no. kind. I think they're expensive, and I don't remember how much per year. It's like three to five hundred maybe per year just to get access. Um, so that's probably why. But we can also um, share, for example, if you're ever <laughs> if you're ever in Montreal, you're welcome to come in and, and use it. Um, and then I also wanted to say that um, ways that Girls Action can support, if you are going to a funder who, own, who only gives money to organizations with charitable status, that we have in the past and we can, will consider... Um, being the go-between because we have charity status. So if you're ever in that situation and you think it might be a good fit, we are willing to do that. Um, and then the other thing is I can, I'm happy to help review proposals. Like obviously you need to do the work, but I, I, I enjoy giving feedback. I need a little bit of feed, like lead time. But there are ways like... Um, and, and even to have like specific funding conversations. So, Girls Action is like one of our one of our roles we see is um, in this way as re as resource people for our network members. So feel free to to call us and and uh, and we will do our best to support.